to earn more money but too busy to start a side hustle? Do it the right way and teach your money to make more money for yourself, even when you're asleep. Dale Corpus will show you just how here on the School of Cashflow. With his entrepreneurial mindset and extensive experience in real estate and finance, Dale will help you become a responsible, strategic, and passionate passive real estate investor. Learn how you can increase your earnings or find more ways to make money, only here on the School of Cashflow. Good afternoon and welcome to the School of Cashflow podcast. I'm the host, Dale Corpus. You're in for a great episode. Uh, today's guest is a friend of mine. I haven't talked to him in a while, so it's going to also be good to just also catch up time, with him. It's time to catch up. Yep. Yeah, it's like <laughs> podcasting is what the new coffee like break and what, like coffee meeting that could catch up with you too and learn things, right? Definitely. Um, anyway, my guest, his name is Adam Carr as well. Uh, love the energy he brings and the, the hustle in him. Um, Adam is a real estate entrepreneur and podcaster. In fact, uh, I was a past guest on his uh, Dream Chasers podcast like a year or so ago. And he's also a LinkedIn power networker and a new media marketing maverick. He's a co-founder of Raise Masters, the number one mastermind for elite capital raisers. And Adam earned a moniker, the voice of liberty as a master of ceremonies at Liberland National Events and hosts the nation's podcast, The Liberland Show. And he's also a uh, cryptocurrency pioneer and the co-host of the Blockchain Real Estate Summit. Um, over the years, Adams interviewed uh, world leaders such as Grant and Aleda Cardone, Doug Casey, Roger Burr, and uh, G. Edward Griffin. And um, quick factoid, Adams a former semi-pro uh, basketball player and he was inducted in the Hall of Fame at his alma mater for his accomplishments on the court as well as on the track. And in his spare time, he's training to be a world-class DJ Wow, Adam. Like, this is awesome. All right. Uh, Adam, welcome to the show. How are you? <laughs> Doing great, Dale. Happy to, to catch up with you. And I got to applaud you um, on the bio, too, because as a fellow podcaster myself, you know, we ask people to send us the bios in advance. And I'm right there with you, man. Like, you don't look at it until two seconds before you go. And um, I've, I've had people, you know, struggle with what you just did. Like you, you nailed it. So thank you for the warm intro. I'm happy to be yeah. here. And I just want to applaud you and all the hard work you do with this show. Um, a lot of people think, Hey, they got a podcast. All they do is talk. It's the easiest thing ever. And it's another job. It really is. So all the hard, I just appreciate all the work you've put into, to get us to this point. No, that's amazing. It's like, well, I love the diversity of just your bio. Cause you've done a lot of things and it makes you really an interesting, you know, person and just, uh, um, and it's like, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, Let's just, let's just see where this conversation goes because like I want to you know talk to you about different things. Just well, I see you got your Starbucks there. I just finished uh, a cold brew myself with these like chocolate cream cold brew or something like that. So, that cheers. Well, that's good. I drink like I actually drink. So I, I I was in a rush today. I I typically drink Pete's. It's stronger than Starbucks and um, Pete's coffee in our area. It's like Pete's is is usually. Pizza. Pete's coffee, P E E T S. I'm not sure if it's if, if they have it where you're at. So if you remember, I, I lived in the Bay for about six months, and I, I yeah. live in Canada now. And everyone is religious with Tim Hortons here, in the same way that the Bay is religious to Pete's. I've seen uh -huh. that for myself. Like in Duncan, Duncan on the East Coast is Pete's on the West Coast. Um, I'm trying to think of where our Starbucks is really like the staple. I guess pretty much anywhere you know outside yeah. of the Bay. Like yeah, they have Starbucks. Yeah. Sure. I guess you're doing, you know, the other popular one that I go to, uh, you know, that does, you know, they, they, do, they basically do single drip. Uh, they, they drip it every time. Uh, is Phil's coffee. Uh, is that, oh, had that one? Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I think you might be thinking of that one. Cause that's the one where, you know, uh, the, all the flavors are so good. You just need to have, you just can't be in a rush because it takes a while to get your coffee there. <laughs> so yeah, maybe I'm, th so either it was either Phil's or Pete's you're right in the bay yeah. one of those two is like bigger there than anywhere uh, else in the u.s uh so canada huh so whereabouts in canada just uh to get uh listeners just kind of knowing where you're at based out geographically huh. yeah so this is uh it's been a fun journey because i'm originally from cleveland ohio i've lived in washington dc mountain view california belize um from as i mentioned yeah from ohio lived in uh, western pennsylvania for a little bit when i was in college now in canada live in newfoundland um started a digital nomad journey here that never ended met my wife here we got married about a year ago 
And we're actually getting ready to move. Probably, by, I think by the time this interview is out, ladies and gentlemen, we will be in Calgary. Or as I've noticed people from, from Calgary, they actually say like Calgary. They say it like that. So um, we'll be in Calgary, Canada very soon. Again, probably by the time this is live. So if we have any Canucks tuned in, we'd love to get connected. Obviously, Americans as well will be uh, traveling throughout the U.S. throughout the year for some some real estate conferences and whatnot. But yeah, and you know, one thing coming to mind for me just now, just on the topic of coffee, have you ever been to the Rose Cafe in L.A.? I have not. So tell me about it. <laughs> Rose Venice. It's um, it's in Santa Monica, Venice, Venice Beach area. Mm -hmm. yeah, my wife and I, we went there recently and actually being in the bay area you could probably definitely relate to this but I, you know there's a little bit of a homeless problem in just in california you know so yeah. <laughs> we go to the rose which this is like you know a breakfast coffee entree maybe one appetizer 70 80 dollar bill which I, I knew it was expensive but i forget like they actually don't even have the prices on the menu i don't think so you're kind of like hmm all right, let me just get this. <laughs> so I just remember we go, it's like, all right, I was just was expecting to pay like 20 bucks for breakfast. It was 80, whatever. This was really nice. And we walk out of the rows and it's just like tents, like all over the street and stuff like that. I'm like, this is so interesting because I just had such an amazing, well worth it, expensive experience in this very nice cafe, which I do recommend anyone in LA. And if, I'm sure if you know Santa Monica, you know what I'm talking about. The Rose Men is very nice. Hi, like if you want to flex, go there. But um. <laughs> But yeah, it was like, man, there's, it's very, very odd to have to, you know, walk out of there. And then there's just like tents up and down the street. Uh, we're getting to an in interesting place here uh, in America. And I guess I'm maybe I'm kind of putting this on a, a little bit of like a sad note to kick it off. But either way, hey, you know what? California is still beautiful. Sun shines out like all the time. So don't get me wrong. But I, I thought of that when we started talking about coffee, a place that I want to endorse, but just don't be turned off by like tents in the street around yeah, it. The coffee is still good. Still go there. Yeah. <laughs> still go there. Yeah. Still go there. Still go there. Um, I know that just going back, you know, looping back to this conversation, we met through obviously, you know, real estate connections and whatnot. I, I initially met you um, because you were connected to Hunter Thompson's cash flow connections, you know, mentorship program. But like, I know you obviously weren't doing real estate first. So it's just like, why don't you tell the audience about, you know, more of like your background and how you got started and whatnot and how the, how the heck did you get from the, from the, from there to, to doing stuff in real estate and just all the entrepreneurial endeavors you're doing? Yeah. Um, if I had to, to really trace it back to a defining moment, I'd say as a, a combination of, we'll go, we'll go with two. So one, um, between high school and college, and actually, no, I'll take that back. This would have been between my first and second year of, of college at Westminster, which I'm actually I'm rocking my Westminster shirt here today, coincidentally. Um, we got my friends and I and my brother got into making YouTube like dance, like music videos. Yeah. And this was at a time where, man, it's crazy thinking back because I remember we kind of thought that we had missed the boat on YouTube. And this is like the like 2010, 2011. And you know, we, we didn't really keep up with what we were doing because of, you know, life got in the way and we were making like these dance videos and everyone was going out to get like a job. So like, we weren't really pursuing it full time. So it's like, all right, let's kind of minimize this like silly childish behavior so we can go be professionals. I'm looking back on it now. Like if we would have just stuck with what we were doing over the, over the past decade, who knows <laughs> where we'd be right at right now. And so if you guys want to like watch any of my like funny dance videos, um, that, that page actually for the most part is private because, um, I don't know. It's just maybe some of the professionalism stuff there. We do want to just protect a little bit, but if you want to watch any, just hit me up. I'll, I'll send you the unlisted links, but <laughs> you'll see what I'm talking about when I send it to you. Yeah. Dale. Okay. But I, it's, I'm getting, I'm getting somewhere with this. So that, that was really the turning point for me where I started getting on camera and in front of a microphone consistently and really started to realize, okay, like I, I enjoy this. Um, now, fast forward, I pursued a, a career in collegiate basketball coaching, did very well there, but then transitioned into the corporate world, worked at Sherwin, well, quote unquote corporate, got a job with Sherwin-Williams, the, the paint company, managed stores for them in the Washington, D.C. area. I had a friend that I went to college with that was actually a recruiter for them that, that got me in there. And um, that was cool. But I realized, you know, very quickly, I'm working my way up a ladder here that seems like it's never going to end. And, um, you know, I've always had this underlying creative side that I was kind of minimizing so I could have a good view on LinkedIn and, you know, impress all the people that I wanted to be like one day. Um, and then I quit that job 
did, was doing very well, but quit it to dive into real estate as a real estate agent with Remax in, in McLean, Virginia. And um, Remax Distinctive was where I was at when I first started getting back into the content creation side of things because I was like, oh, wow, I don't have to worry about like anyone caring what I do like publicly now. And that was a really liberating moment. So there's a bunch of like probably backstories there that I, that I don't know if we'll have time to dive into here today. But as far as getting comfortable communicating, those were really like two defining moments, the, the silly YouTube videos. And then um, a few years after that transitioning into, I guess, just more professional content creation um, that I didn't have to worry about what my bosses think about what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, my, my broker at Remax Distinctive, shout out to Andrew Reamer, was one of, really one of the first mentors in real estate that took me under his wing. Because as you know, like typically when you're starting out as a realtor, you don't start with a, re a Remax. Like that was kind of a blessing situation. And then, um, yeah, then shortly after that, like within the, within a year of starting at Remax is when I found Hunter Thompson on a podcast. I was like, man, I, I really like where this guy's head is at. I have no idea what he just was talking about. Cause he was talking about commercial, like commercial real estate investing. Like it's crazy. And I'm sure you've seen it for yourself, Dale, how, when you first get into this real estate game, because of the way HGTV and our society is set up, most people, when they think real estate, they just think houses, period. Like, that's it. I didn't realize there was all this other stuff going on here that really wasn't that hard to get into as long as you have a couple of the right connections. And Hunter was that initial connection for me. Um, and so, yeah, you know, here we are. We have a mastermind focused on raising money, helping ensure that our members' deals get funded over and over again. And a lot of that is leveraged off of Hunter's expertise. And, you know, my role within our community is to make sure people are hitting their goals and getting connected to all the, the rock star people they need to be connected to. And it's just been, you know, an incredible journey to, to now kind of be in a hybrid role of like education, real estate, even tech, just because of all the automations and things that we're, we're working with our members on. So um, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun, but very <laughs> unconventional to get to, to where we're at here today. No, absolutely. It's just like, no, it's great that we, you know, we intersected just, you know, connecting on, you know, uh, commercial real estate investing. Well, like also I met you through, obviously the Hunter Thompson stuff as well. And even for myself being a real residential realtor, it's just, yeah, I know real estate, but the idea of commercial real estate investing, it's just the jargon was different. It was just a di different way of talking. Even I had to learn the different, uh, you know, you know, different terms and whatnot, but it's, it, it's been great. And it's like, I'm glad that I, 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 you know, even somebody that's again in real estate, even somebody like me, it's just like some of those terms can seem a little bit scary, but like, once you just start talking to people and immersing yourself and just having conversations, you get, you get right into yeah. it. <laughs> and I don't know if you're, if your clients are even aware of how much of an edge they have having you as a resource in their community. Cause I'd say seriously, like your average realtor, and I see this from real estate agents and brokers who join our group, your average uh, broker on the residential side has no idea really for the most part about any of this stuff. Maybe a few things here, there's a limited partner, which I'm sure you're, you know, you've got a few deals that you could talk about yourself as well, but I just want to encourage your listeners again, like, Hey, you have Dale as a resource. If you haven't talked to him at all about commercial real estate investing, you should definitely consider it, especially if a lot of your wealth is in like the stock market or what people would consider traditional assets. It's funny. I think um, most, most, uh, financial planners refer to real estate as an alternative asset class and yeah. always makes me laugh because real estate is actually the original asset class. But anyways, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just, I'd say if you guys haven't talked to Dale about any of the stuff that we might talk about here today on the, on the commercial side of things, the barrier to entry is probably lower than you think. And, and he's, he's definitely a great resource for you to get in there. Um, speaking of real estate investing, um, did you like, when, like, in terms of, you know, real estate investing, did you yourself, you know, get into real estate investing uh, right in on the commercial side of things or did you dabble on the residential side of things or where are you at with just investing in general? What's your, what's your philosophy? Hmm. Yeah, great, great question. So, you know, my, as I mentioned, my journey here really began and I'd say you know, I started getting, working on my license and everything in the story I just told probably 2016, 2017, but I wouldn't say I really even had a thorough grasp of anything that I was doing till about late 2017, early 2018. Um, and I say all that to, to preface, like, I really, I didn't know anything about investing 
And um, part of it is, you know, maybe just the, the way that I was raised, you know, I was always taught save, 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 but never anything about invest. And I think that's just a typical, you know, average American middle-class mindset is you go to job or go to school, you get a job, um, you know, you work your way up and you save. And maybe you have like some 401k options or whatever. So um, the light bulb for me and actually having a strategy around truly saving and then investing money, I'd really say I wasn't there until probably 2018 at the earliest, maybe even 2019. So um, a lot of those years were hustle and grind too. I'd say I've really been in a, a solid position the past couple of years now with what Hunter and I are working on where I'm really stepping into a new world of wealth that I haven't experienced until now. So all of this to say, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I'm still building up my investment portfolio until I can confidently make moves in the real estate space based on all the education and knowledge and resources and connections I have now, which I'm grateful for. And it's really, it's really nice to be here. Cause I know once I hit some of these you know milestones I have set for myself, I know exactly where the capital is going to go. But the one asset class, and I know people might chuckle, but as you mentioned, Dale, you put me in there as a cryptocurrency pioneer. And then a lot of people are running around like, like chickens with their heads cut off right now. But thankfully, I would say on, on the crypto side of things, I have been through a few rocky patches to give me enough confidence now and, and where I'm at. So um, I'll just go ahead and you know share my investment thesis with you and, and your audience. Um, you know, until I, until my crypto portfolio hits somewhere between a, a quarter, quarter million to, to a million, um, that's when I'm going to start making my passive real estate investments. So, um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. But if I had asset classes to talk about that, I really like that I would recommend people invest in based on what I've seen. Um, I think <laughs> multifamily is just, it's not going anywhere. If anything, it's going to just continue to grow. It's, it's the most popular one, but it's also like a sleeper pick. Cause I think a lot of people think the market's getting saturated. There's not as many opportunities there. And I just got to say like multifamily investments, especially in like tertiary markets are really, really solid uh, moves to make. So I'd recommend that. The other one is um, personally, I just, I really like self-storage <laughs> in a recession. Typically it does well. And myself being someone, a human that just accumulates stuff. I love donating it and getting rid of it, but we are creatures of like storing up stuff and there's always going to be a need to store it somewhere when it gets a little bit too crazy. So those two things like multifamily, self-storage, you know, be on the lookout for some, some Adam Carswell investments in those asset classes in particular, pretty soon. Love it. Um, I'm, I'm not too big. Uh, I, I don't know too much about just crypto in, in, in general. It's not my thing, but it's like, how, uh, how did you get involved in the crypto space? And like, what are you doing um, in that space? <laughs> Yeah, so I first got into it right around the time, as I mentioned, when I, when I quit my W-2 to get into real estate, I found myself being in a position as a young entrepreneur with not really much of a framework on the direction I was going, having a bunch of free time. And with that free time, I'd say at least I was using it pretty proactively. I was indoctrinating myself with YouTube university videos. And when I really think about it, that's ultimately how I found Hunter, because I started going down Bitcoin rabbit holes in 2017. And one of the channels that I was getting my, my Bitcoin information from, they had a show that just kind of interviewed a variety of different people. And Hunter was definitely the most buttoned up guest they had maybe had ever. <laughs> That's probably why he stood out to me. But um, the show is called, it's called Anar Anarchast, by the way, hosted okay. by, by Jeff Berwick, who's actually a friend of mine now. We got to know Jeff a little bit. But um, yeah, so how did I get into Bitcoin? I was just telling my st this story to someone the other day, too. I was a rookie entrepreneur, investor, business person. So at, in 2017, when Bitcoin really had its first boom and kind of got it to almost mainstream, like people not laughing at it anymore, um, I went to the moon and back. I remember my, my investments were like, based on where I was at, they had to have like 10 X and then Bitcoin hit around like 20 grand, which keep that in mind. Everyone tuned in right now. Everyone's freaking out because it's at like 29, 30 grand or whatever. I remember a, a day when it was like six grand and everyone was celebrating because it hit 20 and then it went back down to six. So like this stuff, this happens. But I remember watching my, my crypto bank just go up and up and up and up and up. I'm thinking, hey, I'm 26. I'm the smartest investor in this game. <laughs> I know what I'm doing, right? And then I remember watching it go down and down and down and down and down and down and down. Now, 
looking back on it, and this is one thing I've kind of observed from anyone who's a, who's a wise, smart, typically older investor. It's very rare that you meet anyone who's like in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s from an investment perspective that says, um, what's the word? I, typically the, 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 this take is, I wish I would, I wouldn't have sold. I wish I would have just held on to whatever it was that I had. I wish I wouldn't have sold. And that's definitely what I learned from that lesson, because as that price continued to go down, I panicked like many rookies do. And I sold my way right back into basically where I started. So, um, you know, that was a, a lesson learned. And then I'd say I really started getting back into the crypto market actively about 20, like when, when COVID hit. And so for the past two years, haven't sold anything. <laughs> um, and I really have no desire or intention to do so. And I think for anyone out there who's speculative or whatever, like, I really do think that like, from what we can see, Bitcoin and Ethereum aren't going anywhere. And if you can put yourself in a position where you're just scooping up a little bit of both of those every month, it doesn't even have to be much. It could be, you know, anywhere from a few hundred to a few grand, whatever works for you. If you can just set that up once a month and keep scooping and scooping and no matter what the market does, just have the mindset, okay, I'm going to be holding on to this for at least like the next five to 10 years. Your, your portfolio is going to look very different in that amount of time. So that's kind of my crypto story and my mindset where I'm at now. There's definitely some what they call uh, altcoins, alternative coins that I'm interested in. But for anyone who's getting started, it's a no brainer to me for Bitcoin and Ethereum, just to scoop a little bit up and get it in your portfolio. Um, and you talk a little bit about, more about the blockchain, you know, real estate summits. Like this is where like with the, the tech, the, you know, we're almost like crypto meets real estate and whatnot. Like, let's talk about that. I mean, totally. even, I don't even know too much about that. <laughs> so yeah. elaborate more on like what you got going on over there. <laughs> so I have to absolutely, absolutely have to endorse the, you know, the, the blockchain real estate summit, which is, you know, kind of a, so Michael flight, who's the CEO of, of Liberty fund.io him and I got together about a year ago and we're like, Hey, we're going to do this thing. And we did it in fall of 2021. I think we sold like definitely less than a hundred tickets coming into the event. And by the time the event was over, it was like at least three or 400 people there. We're like we sold all the tickets, like within a 20, 48 to 24 hour period. Cause I don't know, people just flock to Austin and there's a massive need for information at this crossroads, as, as you can imagine. So blockchainrealestatesummit.com. I'll be emceeing this year as I did last year and likely will continue to do so. We're even thinking about doing an international one in either like Panama or Brazil. We're still talking, but hey, you know, send me on the road and give me a microphone. I'll go rock a stage anywhere. So anyways, blockchainrealestatesummit.com, guys. Go ahead and check it out. Get your tickets there. And then, yeah, you know, I think the, the ultimate takeaway here uh, well, my observation from that conference last year was 90% of anyone who went to that conference came in with a bunch of question marks. And then majority of people who left came out with a lot, a lot more clarity than they had ever had. Um, there's one uh, very prominent investor in our circle who has a daily podcast, who I'm sure you know, Dale, I don't have his <laughs> permission to go on record and necessarily talk about this. But what I can say is he's working on his, his PPMs, his private placement memorandums right now to have a clause. And this is what I would recommend to anyone out there who's actively um, syndicating or doing deals. And you got to follow, like go through some of our content and reach out to me if you want me to connect you with the ones who can actually give you the crystal clear take on this. But the, from a high level, there's a way in your PPM that you can basically say, hey, um, you know, we're going to provide the option for you as an investor to basically take your shares in form of, of a security token, as opposed to traditional call, call them paper shares. And what that does is unlocks liquidity in the real estate investing market like we've never seen. And I can tell you right now at Liberty Real Estate Fund, which is a, a triple net lease security token fund, after a year of holding your security token, your token, as an investor, you are able to then take that token and then resell it on the secondary market to a non-accredited investor. So all of a sudden, we're getting into a realm now where security tokens, just like crypto, are only going to get popular, I think only going to become the standard once somebody kind of just takes the lead on it. And for clarity, like basically what that's saying is someone, just pick a random country in uh, Africa, uh -huh. uh, Tanzania, someone in Tanzania doesn't know, could you just say, maybe doesn't even know that much about US real estate. 
could now become an investor in a U.S. triple net lease asset through purchasing, you know, a share of a token on a secondary market. Like it's going to open up the world to the benefits of U.S. real estate investing in a stable coin, right? This isn't something that's just backed by, you know, a lot of people like to say crypto, it's what is it backed by? Uh, security tokens are actually going to be backed by physical assets, which is another reason why we, we love the world of real estate. No, no, that's amazing. Um, yeah, it's like, I, um, I, I can't, t- I can't wait to see how that all develops and where, cause that could, that can potentially just be the norm. It's just right now, it sounds crazy the way you're talking. I'm sure. <laughs> right. You know, you're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, but like, you know, things that sound crazy, like, you know, uh, even a decade ago, uh, like social media and whatnot, look at them, look at now it's all commonplace and everybody's all used to it. So I get, I get where this is all going. Cause I could see it totally. going out of there. Um, so one of the, you know, um, I, 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 I never asked you this, but I wanted to ask you, like, you, you've, I, I know you have multiple podcasts now and whatnot, but like I was a guest on your dream changers podcast and whatnot. Did you always have that pod? Did you run a podcast even be- before you started working with Hunter Thompson or did you start a podcast after you started working with Hunter Thompson? <laughs> really great observation because I had, I did start my show before I met Hunter but it was at a time where I didn't even really realize that I had started a podcast. Um, a friend of mine who produces electronic music came out with an, an EP in the fall of 2017. You can look him up. His name is Sully, S-U-L-L-I. Mm-hmm. The name of the EP was Sarah Tonin. And I don't even think he's really released a whole lot since then. But I remember listening to it and thinking to myself, like, wow, this guy that I went to college with, I had no, like, I had no idea that he had this skill set and it was right up my alley. Cause that's my favorite kind of music. I'm like, dude, this is good stuff. Like the world needs to know about what you just made. And so I was like, let's do an interview and we'll talk about your, uh, you know, what you made. And I remember like, this is, this is, it's crazy to think this is before zoom. I think we just make shifted an interview on like Skype or something <laughs> and recorded it. And then I did that with like, maybe like three or four other people, maybe five. And then that was around the time when I went through the Cashflow Connections Mentorship Program, yep. which is kind of like our connection. And um, after that course, I had a couple one-on-one phone calls with Hunter and I told him about the, the show. And he was basically like, well, dude, like, I don't know if you realize this, but you actually do have a podcast. Like this is a podcast. And if I were you, I would start releasing an episode per week and I would get going on that right now. <laughs> and I was like, okay. You know, again, I want to be like this guy one day. So if he's going to give me this advice, this recommendation, I'm going to do it. And that was, you know, again, late 2017, early 2018. And here we are in 2022. And I have not stopped. We've released one episode per week. I think we took maybe a two month hiatus at one point, just to kind of regroup and see how we want to bring the show back. But, you know, we might do that again, too. I don't know. But the, the main thing is, like, we were talking about this before we hit record today. If you're a podcaster, the one thing, no matter what, that's going to set you apart from any other podcaster is you just keep doing it. You just keep going. Just keep going. Keep recording. Just for, just for like clockwork. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. And there's plenty of hacks out there. Like if you, if you want to take a year off, there's ways to do it. It's called, you know, batch recording. Go ahead. Now it's a lot of work, but go ahead and record 30, 60, whatever episodes in advance and just drip them out. It's doable. Yep. Um, going back to podcasting, it's like, I, I mean, your podcasts are interview style as well, just like mine. And it's just like, I, every time I talk to somebody, just like you right now, it's, it's basically like a case study. You get to talk to somebody, you know, uh, see the way they I like that. They think uh, the way they tick and whatnot. And it's like, you've inter- you've had, you've interviewed more folks than I have. And it's just like, um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to ask you this. It's like, uh, because of you, 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 you've talked to so many people, like, what do you think are the most important traits, uh, skill sets of like successful, you know, investors slash entrepreneurs? Just put it right here. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. I love this question. Um, Cause there's power in patterns. And I think the one, pa- the one pattern, this is some people are going to want to, some people are going to want to hear this and be like, nice. And <laughs> there's some people out there who are going to hear this who have been running and hiding from this thing I'm going to say, but um, you have to, okay. I don't say you have to, 
one of the for sure ways to bring yourself into new levels of success, wealth, prosperity, whatever you want to call it, is to create content. Um, I look at our most successful members in Raise Masters, who I'm sure if I drop the names here, you're going to know you're yep. going to know a good chunk of them. Um, the people that we have on our show, I'm sure the ones you've had on your show. Yep. So there's this there's this uh, concept that I really like called the four levels of value. Okay. And I'll give the credit of it to a guy named Myron Golden. Okay. Um, Myron's based out of Tampa. He's got a book called From the Trash Man to the Cash Man. Definitely get yourself a copy of that if you can. Um, and I think Dale, so you're, are you familiar with ClickFunnels and that community, Russell I, Brunson? Um, yes, I am. Okay, cool. So um, for those of you listening who aren't familiar with Russell Brunson, we'll go ahead. I mean, and maybe I'm biased here because we're, we're kind of in his circle, but I, I would argue that he is the brilliant mind of internet marketing for the next two, till he, till he passes away. He's, he's the next bearer of the torch for internet marketing. And um, so within Russell Brunson's community, which Hunter and I are a part of, we're in his inner circle. Um, and within that inner circle, there's one person that people in that group consistently go to, to learn how to sell their product or service to the masses. And, and that guy, is, his name is Myron Golden. So got to set the stage on him who this guy is. So Myron Golden teaches this concept called the four levels of value. There's implementation, unification, communication, and imagination. And I'm going to go ahead and say like, it's got to be close to 99% of the world um, operates in the implementation and unification level. And it's not anyone's fault. It's just the way that the system is set up to kind of, uh, you know, I would argue to control us. And what that looks like, you know, implementation level is someone who's making money or getting compensated by using their hands mm -hmm. so on the low end you could be flipping burgers or making tacos at taco bell uh, on the high end you could be um an auto body mechanic mechanic at bentley or jaguar or rolls or whatever you know something high end so you could there's some jobs out there an electrician whatever like some six figure do it with your hands jobs out there but that's that's about the cap that's where i'm going with it that's the cap then, so that's implementation. Unification is the people who manage the people who do the things with their hands. So you're managing a team at Taco Bell in the low end. You're managing a team at Google, Facebook, Boeing, whatever. You're managing the people who do the thing. On the high end with those jobs, I mean, I'm sure there's a few flukes here and there, but in general, like you're, you're probably somewhere between 200 to 400 grand a year on the high end, keeping in mind taxes and all that stuff is a W2. Um, and then there's this chasm. Those are the first two levels. Most people never make it from there to communication or imagination. So communication, I want you to think, um, you know, the power of communication is someone who can communicate a message from, from their heart to another's or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And you can look at that on the creative side, like authors, singers, songwriters, you know, um, Justin Bieber. I know he's not super popular right now, but like Will Smith, all, the, all these people mm -hmm. who have figured out a way to, through the way they communicate to like move the masses, mm -hmm. messages that move the masses. And then there's also, um, you know, like yourself, Dale, like luxury, luxury home sales, high ticket sales, someone who is using their mouth to make money, basically. Is that the best we can look at? So that's communication. And, you know, growing up, in our, uh, in our school system, I like to call them government, government indoctrination camps. We are trained to like basically despise communication for the most part. Like everyone can think of a moment that they were deathly afraid to get up in front of their class and give a speech. And that's really the only practice at communication that I've seen traditional schooling provides. So I, I just think it's completely backwards. The people who can get on here and get on a microphone and talk and influence, you know, you think of the greatest communicators of all time. And one of the, I didn't think, I thought about this the other day. I'm like, you know who like one of the OGs of content creation was? It sounds funny, but like, like Jesus, Muhammad, uh, like any of these like religious leaders, what's the reason that we all know them is because they have content that has perpetuated centuries. And so they were communicators. And there's no, like every single one of us actually has that voice inside of us to go out and influence the masses and create messages that move the masses. But we're just not, in, I believe, not encouraged enough to tap into that side of things. So 
we're getting through the four levels of value. That's number three. And then number four is imagination, which I'm just going to throw a name out here. Uh, and you, t- you tell me the, you tell me the first, first, or the first name that comes to mind when I, when I say this company, um, Tesla. Musk. <laughs> there you go. So, I'm Musk. <laughs> so what, what's interesting about that, and we've seen the same thing with, with Apple and Steve Jobs, is um, Elon Musk, like Tesla is actually someone else's name. It's the person who, I got to cr- double check on this, but it's the person who either invented electricity or the light bulb or something like that, which Thomas Edison also gets credit for that. Nikola Tesla was the one. So what's the difference between Tesla and Musk and Thomas Edison? is guys like Edison and Musk use their mind to make money. They said, wow, you know, this brand here, this idea is worth a lot and the world needs to know it. So then they leverage communication and their imagination to get that out there. Steve Jobs, the same thing. He's been gone for you know about a decade now. But when you say Apple, people still think Steve Jobs. Why is that? Because he was in a realm, med- meditatively speaking and communicating where he was able to show what Steve Wozniak had actually created. <laughs> Steve Wozniak was his partner. No one really talks about Steve Wozniak. He was able to show the world the beauty of what Steve Wozniak did through imagination and communication. So whatever you can do, and I think the reason, circling back to the initial question, which is what is the one common trend that I keep seeing between the, the more successful people that I meet is they are out there using communication and, and imagination on a daily basis, as often and as frequently as possible. And so putting yourself in a position to meditate, to get on camera, get in front of a microphone, pray, whatever you want to call it, however you want to look at it, if you can spend most of your time in those realms, you will begin to see results, I'd say, you know, almost instantaneously. And if you don't see them right away, I'll tell you right now, work always works. It's either working for you or it's working on you. So if you step this direction, you don't see results right away, just keep going. It is the secret to massive success. Yeah. It's like, I love this platform to just even doing podcasts and why not, obviously is, is a form of content creation. It's just because it opens doors. I learned things. I've met people. I, I met people. I don't even know that just reach out to me as you could attest to the same thing. I'm sure. And uh, it's like one of the, it's one of those things where it's just like, I didn't know what having a podcast would do, but now that I know, I'm like, why didn't I start it this a while back? <laughs> Uh, and I and the, love- the crazy thing is it's actually still really, really early. Like people, if you remember a few years ago, people were making a big deal about um, Rogan landing like a multi-million dollar deal with Spotify. I'm here to say, I think that's just the first of a wave that we're about to see here in the podcasting space. So I apologize. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's okay. I mean, <laughs> like the, I love just the long shelf life of the fact that the podcast is out there and it'll be you know, be on the internet and like, you know, somebody could be listening to this maybe a decade from now and get value out of this conversation. Exactly. And I think it's crazy. And like, uh, and, 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 you know, maybe reach out to either one of us or whatnot. Um, you know, one of the things that you also said was in your bio is uh, that your, you know, your, your expertise in communication, since we're talking about communication, it sets you apart from the crowd. Um, I want to let, just delve into that a little bit. It's like, what is it about what you do uh, in your in, in the communication realm that you know that sets you apart there's one i, I want to take the networking approach on this one because i think that is really what it boils down to and keep it's, it's going to be some cliches coming here yeah, folks but okay. hopefully this, these are cliches that you know sometimes you got to hear a cliche like 30 times until it clicks <laughs> so hopefully this is the 30th time for for some folks out there but um you know you've got two ears and you got one mouth and I know we're on a podcast right now and Dale and I, we don't get me wrong. We both like to talk. That's why we're here. <laughs> but, uh, and, and actually there's some podcasters out there that didn't used to like to talk because they used to be introverts and then they started doing this and they realized, oh, wow, actually I'm really good at this. So encouragement to my introverts out there. Um, but you know, the one, the one hack here from a connection communication, which really leads to connection uh-huh. is listening to what someone is sharing with you truly and making a, you know making a mental note of of what they're telling you and kind of storing that that in your in your mind and your bank of information so i'll give a couple examples here one thing that i actually realized for the first time recently um did you ever meet tyler lyons does that name ring a bell for you it does not it does he's, not um he's our director of investments at asim capital he's gone through the cash flow connections mentorship program whether you know it or not he's he's in your circle he's in your ecosystem so yep. maybe i'll connect you with tyler here soon but 
<laughs> so I was like, dude, what's the, you know, what's a, what's a networking hack you could share with our audience? And I'm like, you know what? One thing that like almost always works when you're connecting people is remembering where someone tells you that they're from or where they live. So this is, goes beyond business or whatever type of environment you're in. If you can remember like, oh, so-and-so told me that they're from, we'll just call it Cleveland, Ohio. That's where I'm from. Um, I know someone in Cleveland. Like being able to just connect two people that geographically know the same area, regardless of their walk of life, typically results in some kind of like special bond that I, I just can't even quite comprehend. So remember that when you're communicating and connecting with people, like where are they from? Um, always ask people what their name is. That's a big one. And then um, the other thing that I think can really set you apart is we'll just say whatever the environment may be, you're, you're having a conversation with someone, asking them the question, you know, what do you need to happen in your life right now that would take the quality of your life or your business or both to the next level? You know, what is it that would 4X 5x 10x your life based on where you're at right now what is the one resource connection or tool that that you're searching for because most people actually do have an answer to this they might be caught off guard because it really challenges them to think but it's going to challenge them to think they're probably going to give you an answer they're going to never forget that you asked them that question it's like damn that was deep <laughs> well the way you yeah. asked it too it it sounds like this guy really cares yeah, yeah. it shows you care yeah. And, yeah. and if someone tells you something that you don't have the connection, the resource or the tool, whatever it may be, if they give you an answer and, and you don't like know what you can do right now to help them, I'm here to tell you, normally what happens is once you learn that type of information from someone, uh, the, the universe will manifest an answer for you eventually. So if someone's like, man, I need a good plumber, <laughs> as an example. Yeah. Don't have any right now. What do you know? Like next week, you're going to find a connection, boom, make that email, text introduction or whatever. And you just, you become the electric source, the connector, the communicator of your network. And that's, dude, that's what you're doing right now with this show, Dale. Uh, no, no. It's like, you know, speaking of networking, that's like, you are a power network. It's, it's like, I've had what, two or three guests that I've met because of you that are on my pod, you know, that are on podcast. It's like, uh, for example, you introduced me to, to Todd Soldier. You introduced me to, to Tate Durier and there's there's even more people, but it's just like, you know, thanks for those connections. It's like, you never know who you're going to meet and what you're going to learn and what you could even potentially create with that other, you know, with that other person or help them. Right. Um, I just, you know, I love, I mean, whether it's, you know, it doesn't have to be with real estate or whatever, but just like networking will get you uh, and, you know, somebody will help you. People do want to help you <laughs> in general. <laughs> just don't be afraid to ask. And I, I, I love the question, like that question that you're just talking about and, you know, like, what can I do to, you know, get you to 10 extra business or whatever? That's an amazing question. <laughs> that would Absolutely. cause me to start thinking, it was like, it would make me think too. <laughs> um what do you have do you have something running through your head right now on that one um so right uh, well right now my what i'm trying to what i'm in the process th this type of question was actually asked to me like even just last year because right now i'm trying to actually scale up and you know bring on even i'm i'm in the process of just re revamping my, my my business and whatnot and delegating even more so it's like as you know already it's like i, I, already, I was already telling you it's like i'm working with more virtual assistants and scaling up that way and I'm in the process of growing my real estate sales team where um, I partner up with everybody to like free up more of my time. Um, so it's just like, I'm, 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 I'm just revamping my business so that I can grow and do other things where I don't necessarily have to physically be somewhere. Right. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, yeah. you're getting to that delegation phase, which yeah. is, that is like the inevitable path of any entrepreneur. And I don't know if I'm personally quite there yet, but it's another thing where you, you eventually go from doing what you do on a daily basis to get to where you're at, to becoming, if you want to get to that next level, like a, a team manager, a coach, yep. a leader, like your whole focus becomes, how do I, you know, meet the needs of the people that I've brought underneath me. So that way they can go and do the things that I once did with my hands and, and whatnot. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, as, um, as we're wrapping up, it's like, I have some final questions for you. So um, what, what are you excited about now just with, you know, with anything you, that you're doing in business right now? Yeah. Yeah. And um, let me just repeat the question. You said, what am I most what excited? What are you excited about? right now in your business? Oh. Right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, wow. Huh. I'm going to do my best to make it one thing. <laughs> <and> <laughs> <Make> one <business>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you two. 
you know what? I'm going to give you two. Um, cause on the, on the business front, I gotta be honest, the, the, the growth and the excitement and everything that we've seen and we're experiencing at, at raise masters has, has been a blessing and a fun journey. And, you know, really for one of the first times in my lives, I feel like I'm, I'm crystal clear on who, I, who I've been called to serve right now. And it's, it's that community. So for anyone who wants to know more about raise masters, the number one mastermind for elite capital raisers. Just go to, you know, go to raisemasters.com and you can begin going down the rabbit hole there. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely pumped about the, the future of Raise Masters. The other thing that I'm also very excited about is more on the creative side of things, which as we mentioned um, in my spare time, I'm training to be a world-class DJ. So um, I recently began coursework. And this is not like learning. Well, it is a little bit learn as you go, but it's it's like live classes that I'm attending with Tool Room Academy. You can go to toolroomacademy.com. Uh -huh. And it's a record label, a tech house record label in particular that I've been following for about, about five years. Um, always listen to their show. They have, you call it a podcast with a bunch of music, but I've been listening to it for years. And it's just evident to me that this is like the vibe that I really like and I want to emulate as a creator myself. So um, yeah, I signed up for their course. I'm two classes in. I actually just got my homework assignment um, earlier today. So I'm going to work on it over the next couple of weeks, but learning how to produce tech house music. And that will also lead to me. So I've, I've always been the world's greatest Spotify DJ. You know, I can hop on a microphone and play around with Spotify and, you know, fade in, fade out. But like, that yeah. was about it. And I was like, you know what, if, if, if I hit age like 50, and I've never learned how to work turntables and get the crowd to go crazy at least a few times. Like I'm going to feel like I missed out yeah. on something in life. You so, <laughs> that, you know, that's, that's a big piece of it. There is uh, I love having a good time playing music and getting the people going. It's, it's in my blood. I love it. Um, what's your superpower that's contributed to, uh, you know, to all your success. <laughs> um, I, you know, the more, the, the more I practice, doing things in this realm of communication and imagination um, that we've been talking about, the more I do start to see, because um, I, I want to be the first one to come on here and say to everyone, like, hey, everything we talked about here today is, is literally attainable. It's attainable for anyone. So I think that I would say my superpower is helping individuals realize that we all do have a voice and that we all, within ourselves, we, we all are just as creative as a lot of people that maybe we look up to and say, wow, I, you know, I could never be like them. We actually all can. It just, it starts with the confidence and the, the awareness of knowing that we all do have that within us. So I'd say my, my superpower um, is helping empower and awaken others to find their voice. Love it. I love it. Um, my, my last question is just like, how, how can somebody get a hold of you? Hmm. Best way, best, definitely the best way. If you, if you like me enough that you want to say, hey, you know, I just want to keep hanging out with Adam. This has been awesome. I got to be completely 100 with you. Like raisemasters.com, check out our mastermind and seriously, you know, give it some consideration and joining. Because if you want me to connect with you and, and, and serve you at my highest and best potential, that's, that's when I'm at my highest and best potential. So I would love for you to become you know, a member of our group and get to know you that way. Um, aside from that, if you really enjoyed the show, you know, you feel free to, um, you know, just shoot me a DM or whatever on LinkedIn, very active there. But um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, if I could give you that one, you know, that one URL, <laughs> that one call to action, check out raisemasters.com. Love it. Um, well, thanks for joining me on the show. Got Thank it. you for having me, Dale. I just realized we're, we're on our time. So yeah, we're wrapping it up. It's <laughs> like, it's like, again, always, uh, you know, it's always refreshing and motivating just to hear stories of other, again, investors, entrepreneurs, and just uh, them doing their thing and following their dream. And so, uh, you know, for you, Adam, it's like, hope, I hope you continue to inspire, you know, those around you. Um, you're very inspirational, by the way. Uh, Thank and thanks for you sharing your story and just, your, you know, your overall journey uh, entre to entrepreneurship uh, and investing and whatnot. And I wish you much continued success. And to my listeners, feel free to reach out to Adam directly uh, if you have any more questions for him. Uh, thank you for checking out this episode of the School of Cashflow. And remember to leave a podcast review on iTunes as it helps me attract even more great guests just like Adam. So until next time, live life abundantly. Thank you, Dale. Thank you. Huh.
Thanks for listening to another episode of the School of Cash Flow. We hope you enjoyed our deep dive into all the tips and tricks you can use to help you on your passive investing journey. In the meantime, you may visit www.cashflowschoolpodcast.com for more great episodes. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, review, and share. That's all for this episode, folks. See you next time.